After interviewing over 500 engineers on my podcast, I've identified the four most mentioned causes for test automation flakiness. And these apply universally regardless of the test automation framework you might be using. So the first major cause of flakiness is not having a robust locator strategy. Hey, before we get into it, I just want to mention that if you're a test automation engineer, this channel is for you. We share real world advice to help you succeed in automation. So if you want to get better at testing and want to grow your career, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. So when crafting an automation test script, one of the critical elements that test engineers need to pay attention to is their locator strategy. So that's how you identify elements within your application. So relying on superficial aspects of an application, such as a class name, or even X, Y coordinates uh, can lead to very inconsistent results as they can frequently change during the application's life cycle. The best way I've seen is to actually make sure your developers are using IDs for all the elements. However, I know that's not always applicable, but whenever you can, always get your developers involved and try to at least get a unique ID. Also, it's highly recommended to standardize object identification based on more reliable attributes like IDs or other immutable properties, like having your developers create a unique ID for all the elements that they add to your application. And by having a robust locator strategy, you can really enhance the reliability and efficiency of your automation tests, leading to more consistent and accurate results. There's nothing worse than having your test fail and you look and go, oh, the ID has changed. It wasn't able to locate it. You want to make sure that your automation isn't seen as flaky, because if it is, Developers and your whole team are going to lose confidence in them and everyone's going to start ignoring them, regardless if it actually starts feeling because of a real issue. So in one of my interviews, one with Geetha that I'll have linked down below, she mentions the strategy her team uses is to add unique attributes to the elements on the page. And this makes it easier for the automation code to find the elements and helps prevent flakiness. In addition to using unique attributes, you can do two things to improve your locator strategy. First, Use standard locators like ID, name, CSS selectors. These locators are more reliable than other locators such as XPAT. And I would only do this if you can't get your developers to create a unique ID for you. Second, you should avoid using link text as a locator as well. The link text can change and it does often, which will cause a lot of your tests to fail as well. Instead, you should try to use the full text of the link or the href attribute. The second biggest cause of automation flakiness is a lack of a proper synchronization strategy. So this is an essential component of a efficient automation test script, and that is synchronization. In my interview with Alan Richardson, aka The Evil Tester, he made a great point about synchronization. He said you really want to make sure that before you interact with something, that you first interrogate it and make sure that it's present before you manipulate it, making sure that it's clickable. So don't make any assumptions. So always be proactive when you're writing a test to make sure that you're checking to make sure you're in a known state before you continue. Newer tools out there sometimes help with this, like Playwright and Cypress have built-in synchronization checks. So if your network gets a little wonky by a few milliseconds, it still doesn't fail. So if using Selenium, this is definitely something you should look at. Playwright and Cypress, you definitely should keep an eye on it as well. But as I said, they usually have built-in functionality that handles it for you automatically under the covers. So in my book, Automation Awesomeness, numerous folks mentioned there are about four must-have synchronization methods that you should check out. The first one is checking if something exists. The second is checking if something does not exist. The third is waiting for something to exist. And the fourth is waiting for something not to exist. So by employing these techniques, your automation scripts can patiently wait until the application reaches the desired state before processing with the next step. So mastering synchronization can significantly improve the reliability and efficiency of your automation test. Also, this helps you to avoid any dreaded sleep commands. You should avoid sleeps as much as possible because it makes your tests run longer and there's no need for it when you can use a more robust, more reliable synchronization strategy like we mentioned earlier. The third biggest killer of automation, making your automation flakiness, is lack of proper test data. Test data is the lifeblood of any testing process. Without it, I think your automation scripts are useless because if you have 10 scripts and they're all using garbage data, your tests really aren't adding out of any value. So it's critical to have a well-defined test data strategy. So the test data that makes up the input values or conditions used to execute your test cases should be diverse and comprehensive to ensure thorough testing coverage. 
So a data strategy is a combination of code, procedures, and infrastructure that affects how tests interacts with data to simulate the system under test. And these test strategies, the patterns, also have two main parts, a creational piece and a cleanup piece. So the creational piece is all about how and when test data is created. And the second is the cleanup piece is the method you use to set the data source back to a previous state. So what I've seen a lot of engineers do is they have first step in a test script is it creates the test data needed for the script to run, usually using an API to input the data needed. And then it runs the test. And at the end, it has a cleanup piece. Also, I've seen people that use ephemeral environments where they bring up an environment that has the test data, they run the test, they tear down the environment, all that data is deleted. So when the tests run again, all that data would be fresh and in a known state as well. That's another way to help. So I highly recommend you spend a bulk of your time making sure your automation tests have correct test data. It's really going to help you. That can help validate the application's robustness and be confident that its behavior works in different scenarios. So one of the experts I interviewed on my podcast, Hugh Price, told me that you should think about test data as something that happens before you even begin development. For instance, if you look or speak with some of the most successful folks that I've had on my podcast, their team started from the project's inception, drawing out from the users what they need from a test data point of view. Also, sometimes when you work in a regulated environment and things like that, it's hard to come up with unique data that's going to be robust enough for your test script. So you want to do some research on data generation tools. You want to check out what's out there. You know, you're not alone in having to create quality test data. And it's a problem all teams are facing now. And there are a lot of new tools out there on the market that can help you populate the test data needed for your tests to run without them missing out on test data and then causing them to fail. So you want to check them out because in the long term, even in the short term, it's going to save you a lot of headaches and a lot of time. And finally, make sure to check out my post in the comments down below for a link to a blog post I wrote on the four essential test data strategies you can use to help with your test data as well. So the fourth and last major cause for automation flakiness is not having proper environments. So a lot of times I've seen people run tests in an underpowered or an unrealistic environment in staging or testing. And then when they go into production, nothing works because the environment was completely different. I've also seen a lot of people that share environments. So I worked in a company that had a shared environment where they used to do demos, but it's also where we used to do testing and staging. So the problem was when they were doing a demo, they'd tell everyone to stay off the system. But obviously, some people didn't get the message. They would run tests, they would break things, and they would make a, a, the demo go really poorly and you'd lose customer feedback and confidence that way. So you need multiple environments. But setting up multiple environments, especially with the application I was testing for a medical device, was really difficult. The test sometimes ran, sometimes failed on different environments because they weren't even set up correctly because it was so difficult to set up. So a huge thing we did to fix the environments is invest in on-demand environments. So we'd be able to create a template of an environment that had all the pieces that needed environment needed for the test to run. So any team can just spin up that environment, and have all the things they would need, all configured for the test to run. So when your test failed, they most likely failed for a real issue, not because the environment wasn't set up correctly. So we definitely want to look into an on-demand environment. Once again, an on-demand environment is one where you can spin up a temporary, fully functioning environment and test a feature independently and without any other dependencies before it's deployed to the production environment. Another thing that I found with using an on-demand environment, sometimes we had tests that were written by a sprint team where it had dependencies on another test, or a lot of times they run a test that would use test data that would put it into a state that another test would need that another team was using and it would fail because they didn't know the other team was running that test. Using on-demand environments to solve that problem as well. So there are a lot of benefits of having an automated test environment, on-demand environments. First one is reduction in manual efforts. Once you have your whole team, all your experts set up a, an environment and all the pieces are there, create a template, you're done. You don't have to worry about it every time a different team needs another environment. It helps reduce operational costs and eliminates human error. It also eliminates bottlenecks that are holding you back from scaling up your automated tests. So if you have tests that run a long time and you just have one environment, it could take 12 hours, but if you spin those tests up against 20 on-demand environments, your tests go down to 5, 10 minutes, another huge benefit as well. 
And it's very easy for developers and testers to create their own test environments, which is critical also. So a quick recap, by adopting a reliable locator strategy, mastering synchronization techniques, leveraging a diverse range of test data, and creating realistic test environments, you can conquer the most common destroyers of automated test scripts. And this leads to more efficient testing, fewer bugs in production, and ultimately contributes to the success of the application or feature being tested. So I hope you found this video useful. Please leave a comment below about which of these four points you found to be the most intriguing or you have personally experienced yourself. And don't forget to like this video and share it with your fellow testers. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down below to never miss out on any more content that we release. Until next time, as always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.